All right, guys, let's take a look at uh, probably, I would say, the most important thing you need to get out of key issue three in chapter two is what's called the demographic transitional model. So let's get into that. I'll explain what that is in a minute, but um, take a look at this slide here. It's interesting because if you look at the pace in which we have increased by billions, it took us, you know, all of human history up until 1830 to hit one billion. hundred years later, we're at two. 29, 15, 13, 12, and 12, we've been increasing the frequency in which we are doubling, or not doubling, adding 1 billion onto our number. And so the reason why this is happening, it can be explained in the demographic trans transition model. So basically what it does is it looks at explaining using birth rates and death rates and rates of natural increase where different countries are along this pathway becoming very, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, prehistoric versus uh, very highly industrialized. And so there's various stages that countries move through on this uh, demographic transition model. So if you take a look here, where is the most population growth occurring? Looks like it is Africa with uh, quite a bit of the pink and Southwest Asia, which is consistent to what the earlier readings of the chapter have been. Okay, here's an overview of the model. So <clears throat> I'm going to give you a couple different uh, graphs and charts to look at. And I know the book has a different picture. But basically what you look at is countries will exist in, all countries on their planet will exist in one of these four stages. No countries currently are in any stage one. And I'll explain what these are in a moment. Most are in the, in the three and some in the two, three, and then there's some in the four. So these are kind of split up, I would say, more in stage three as opposed to stage four. But basically, here's your total population. Your big population boom happens in stage two and, and in the late early stage three, and then things flatten out. And you can see why that occurs. The death rate, which is the bottom line you see here, drops drastically from first stage to second stage. And I'll explain why, and the reasons why are very important to know. And when you have a huge drop in that death rate, and then you have an, uh, a birth rate that's relatively stable, that difference is where you see the population increase. And so that is important to know that happens in stage two. So that's kind of an overview of what the demographic transition model looks like. So let's look at, um, let's look at, here's the overall picture and we'll break it down by each stage. So once again, you have a different view of the same type of model, population growth beginning in that stage two. All right, some people are arguing that there is a fifth stage about ready to occur, but we don't have that as of now, but I'll explain why that's the case in a minute. So if we take a look at that first stage, and this is where uh, we call this the pre-industrial stage, and there are no countries that are in this stage anymore left, um, and this would be categorized by pre-industrial. This is very agrarian, meaning hunters and gatherers and farmers, people living in very rural situations. You have high rates of disease that happen here, and population growth is very slow because you have very, very high death rates, and you have very, very high birth rates. So typically, you're not having a lot of progress in population growth um, because you have things that balance out, like, for example, population increases in good growing years, but as people are more, you know, they're sufficiently fed, and then you have declines in population in famine or disease years. And so that balances out the population. So if you can think of most of the planet um, pre-1700, that would be stage one. But we've moved. Things have changed. So if you look at stage two, we call this early industrial stage. This is where you have very high birth rates, and you have um, death rates that are beginning to drop. And the reason is, typically in this stage two, what you find is that <clears throat> there are some advances in medicine. So medicine comes along and cures measles, or medicine comes along and finds a um, vaccine, and you're reducing the death rate. And I would say this is, um, in the modern world, this is London in the uh, late 1700s, early 1800s, and you have a population boom during that time because you have people that come up with cures for certain types of diseases, and so the, the, because of that, people are living longer. Stage three, well, let me, let me back up. Here's some more um, examples of some of these things. So transition from stage two 
you have public sanitation is another. Uh, we talked about cholera being uh, identified in London and being able to be uh, taken care of and understanding that you improve water supply with people and create safe drinking water, then you inc increase the amount of time that people can live on the planet. So things like better sewage treatment and food handling, those things are all um, discovered during the stage two time period and allowing people to live longer. Um, I remember learning about uh, types of uh, sterilization during the Civil War and a lot of people would use the same type of knife, the same knife in fact on their friend and then move on to a, another comrade and use uh, the same knife without necessarily sterilizing it. So as people understood that you can't use equipment from one person to the next then you can get rid of bloodborne diseases and things of that nature. So stage three is where you have a birth rates decline very sharply and the reason for this is you have um, more of a movement to cities so as people move to cities from countries to cities there's less, less need for people to have a lot of babies because you don't have to have five six seven kids working on the farm and you have a movement more into um, office type jobs families shrink medical <clears throat> advancements uh, tend to increase and so you have the population that stabilizes a little bit. So here's some more information on this stage three. You have uh, death rates are down quite a bit with childhood because of vaccines and things of that nature. And I just mentioned you have increased urbanization. Um, you have city living uh, um, raises costs of living. So as you live in the city, the rent costs. So you don't have as many kids because it costs a lot to raise those kids. And you have women now are more influential in childbearing decisions. Literacy usually increased for women. And so because of that, they now place value. Many women decide to enter the workforce because of this. And now you have choices having to be made between do I go to work and make money or do I have a family? And so those different choices create different options and then a population stabilization. And improved contraceptive technology and birth control are more common so then you are now balancing out your population because of those things. Post-industrial stage four, and this is where the United States would be for example, where you have very low birth rates and you have very low death rates and so you have typically your very near zero population growth or in some cases uh, negative population growth as I'll show you in a minute and um, I don't think I think if you tip, if you take a look at the typical United States, you have a life expectancy of mid 70s for both male and female. You have the access to numerous types of high quality medical care. All of these things have now industrialized um, and revolutionized how we take care of people, and so those would be characteristic of um, societies that have moved to stage four. Along with stage four, and I don't think no, I don't. Um, along with stage four, you have more civil rights and equal rights for uh, genders and women so that you allow equality of options and choice for working and as I mentioned in stage three those are now very prevalent and allow for women to have the choice do I go to work or do I stay home and raise kids and the costs of course living in mega cities LA San Francisco New York are very expensive so people that live in those industrialized cities uh, high-tech cities typically are not having large families so there's your stage four so we look at some examples um, of countries that are fit these demographics. You see Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Palestine, the Palestinian territory, which is in um, the, the Israeli area, and Syria, Jordan area in the, in the Middle East. Uh, you have a lot of demographic transition stage two. And you can look at that and take a look at their, their birth rates. Birth rates are high, and their death rates are high if you compare those to the Brazil and these other three, stage three and stage four countries. And so because of that, you have rate of natural increase, the percentage in which the population is growing is much higher than these other countries down here. Urban population is a little lower, and, and you have a high percentage, especially in Afghanistan, of those people that are working in agriculture. That's a, those are all signs of stage two demographics. You move to stage three, you have Brazil, Mexico, Philippines, South Africa, Sri Lanka. These are just a handful of examples. There are many in this, these where you have birth rates that are de um, declining compared to stage two, but they're still very high. 
and you have death rates that have now dropped as people are beginning to move into major cities. Uh, Mexico City, for example, multi-multi-million population. It is a very important city to Mexico because it attracts a lot of workforce. Rate of natural increase is lower, and then you have an increasing amount of urban living. Now, if you move to Australia, you have a very high percentage urban population. This is an example of a demographic stage four country. And Australia is unique in that most of their cities are on the coastline, and so there's not a lot of people living in rural areas in Australia. And so, but you look at Canada, which has a huge area for space to live, but it's 79% urban population. And the U.S. would be at the same rate. So take a look at this. You can pause this and look and just kind of understand the numbers and fit those numbers in with demographic stages. And we're going to do some playing around with picking countries and, and deciding what stage they do fit in. What's interesting here at the bottom and before we end is Russia and Ukraine, which is a used to be a, a part of the Soviet Union until the breakup in 1989. But you have population decline. If you have a birth rate of 10 and a death rate of 17, then you are losing people that in that country. And so there's various reasons as to why that's happening. But that's a concern for Russians because what do you do when your population decreases? And so that's a potential stage five, but yet geographers have not um, necessarily made that mainstream yet. So there's kind of an idea of the demographic transitional model.